Hi, I'm Miss Calva and I'm here to tell you about Nazi consolidation of power. Thanks for joining me. So Hitler becomes Chancellor in January 1933 and it takes about 18 months for him to actually become the Führer, i.e. the dictator of Germany. That's a really quick process to go from a democratic movement to a dictatorship. So how does he do it? There are five methods how Hitler consolidated his power. They are the Reichstag fire, the Enabling Act, the removal of opposition, then the removal of his rivals, and lastly, the oath of allegiance that he got the army to swear to him. Once he completed all five of those, he is the Führer and everyone is having to do exactly what he says. So chronologically, the first event which helped Hitler consolidate his power was the Reichstag fire. Now that was when the parliament, the Reichstag, burnt down. Bit of a mystery as to how that actually happened. Some people think the Nazis might have done it themselves because there were so many benefits they got from it, whilst others believe what the Nazis said at the time, that it was set by a Dutch communist named Marinus van der Lubbe. Now we will probably never know the truth, but we do know the consequences of that fire were hugely important for the Nazi party because they were able to ban the communist party, the guys that they blamed for the fire. Not only were they able to ban the party, they were able to ban all publications made by the Communist Party, effectively silencing them after this one event. The event also helped turn public opinion against the communists. Now, they were the biggest rivals because at this time of crisis, after the Wall Street crash, people looked for extreme solutions. Extreme times call for extreme solutions. And on the one extreme end, you've got the right wing. And on the other extreme end, you've got the left wing, the communists versus the Nazis. So this was great. This was great for the Nazis. They finally got a chance to get rid of their extreme opposition, leaving the path open for anyone who's feeling some sort of extreme belief to edge towards the right. Another impact of the Reichstag fire was that Hitler actually managed to persuade Hindenburg to pass a really important decree, the decree for the protection of people and state. Now, what that meant was basically he could imprison whoever he deemed opposition. Now, whether they were a threat or not, whether they committed a crime or not, that didn't matter. The point was people lost their freedoms. Next up chronologically is the Enabling Act. But before this act was passed, there was a general election. This was actually one of the first things Hitler did when he became chancellor. And weirdly, it is, it is dem democracy that actually led to dictatorship. Everything he did was legal at the time. So the first thing he did, like I say, after, after becoming chancellor, he says, I'm going to have an election on the 5th of March, 1933. Now this, um, this caused a lot of tension. There were 70 murders just in the week leading up to this election alone. And it actually didn't go very well for the Nazis. Hitler needed two thirds majority to get anything passed, you know, to change the constitution, um, to, to, to make the state what he wanted. Unfortunately, he didn't get that. So he was forced to make a coalition with the Nationalist Party and he wasn't too happy about that. And so that then spurred him on to his next method the Enabling Act. The Enabling Act was passed on the 23rd of March 1933. This enabled Hitler to become a dictator. It didn't get passed very easily. It was democratically passed. So again, we can say that becoming a dictator went through legal means, yeah. But there were some dubious methods to make sure he got the vote that he wanted. For example, where out of all the members of parliament, all of the Reichstag members, he didn't count the number of communists. Therefore, the overall total he needed to get his majority was less. The communists themselves, who were still around, uh, were not allowed to vote in the chamber at all. People who were absent were counted as present and their votes would have gone towards what the Nazis wanted, the Enabling Act. The Catholic Church were bribed, basically, into voting for the Enabling Act because Hitler promised that he wouldn't do anything to stop them in their tracks. And last of all, you got the SA on the scene, as per um, intimidating people as they come in to vote to make sure they do vote for the Enabling Act. Now, as I said, Enabling Act basically enabled Hitler to become a dictator. It got rid of the Reichstag. It made them just a, a rubber stamp. It gave Hitler and the Nazis full power for four years to basically do what they liked. And Reichstag, all they could do was say, yes, with the Enabling Act in place, Hitler was now in a good position to bring the whole of German society in line with his Nazi philosophy. So this is called Gleichschaltung, when basically everyone is doing the same thing, living their lives by Nazi ideals. To this end, he banned trade unions. That happened on the 2nd of May 1933. 
The reason he did this is because if you belong to a trade union, it means that you're basically opposing authority because trade unions, they back the workers over the bosses. They give the workers uh, better wages or better hours or they help them strike, go on protest. Uh, Hitler didn't want any of that. He wanted a workforce at work. He didn't want opposition in any way. And so he banned trade unions completely. He made his own one, the DAF. And you basically had to join the DAF. And that was obviously controlled by the Nazis. And it wasn't quite like the traditional trade union, that's for sure. People who were leaders of trade unions, who'd already had that job sort of thing, they were swiftly arrested. And many were then sent to the first concentration camp, Dachau which was opened in March 1933. Next up was getting control of politics. Now, the Communist Party have already been banned since the Reichstag fire on the 27th of February. But what he does on the 14th of July 1933 is to ban everyone else. See you later on. No need for any more parties. To be fair, with the Reichstag just being, well, a nobody sort of group, there really wasn't much need for any more political parties. So Hitler just tidied everything up and just got rid of everyone. So there wasn't even anyone else to vote for anyway. So this effectively made Germany a one party state. It makes it a dictatorship and it removed people's choice for, well, for an alternative. There was an election held in November 1933. The Nazis, of course, are the only party in Germany to vote for, and they managed to get themselves 95.2 percent of the vote. That's right. Still couldn't even get 100 percent when they were the only ones to vote for three million people spoilt their ballot papers so that means they didn't tick or didn't tick the box they just did something different okay they might have done a rude symbol who knows but there was some opposition obviously to this single party political control the nazis had set up so the last thing they did to gain political control was to get rid of the state governments so a bit like in america where each state has its own government with its own rules in germany there were 18 different states called lander and they, they, they could oppose the national government. They could install some rules and laws in their own localities. Hitler didn't want that. He wants everyone doing the same thing, like Shelton. The state government's parliaments, the Lander parliaments, were abolished completely in January 1934. And it was Reich governors who took over the ruling of these localities. The penultimate stage in Hitler's consolidation was his removal of his rivals. So these are the sort of people who might challenge him for his job. They believe in the same thing as him, they're right wing, but they still might challenge him for his job. Like, you know, opposition within. Like how um, Theresa May was taken over, you know, Boris Johnson took over from her. It's a rival within the same group for your job. So this was called Operation Hummingbird. It was also called Night of the Long Knives. It happened on the 30th of June, 1934. The problems mo moving forwards into this event, it was that the SA were basically becoming a bit of a problem. They were a big organisation. We're looking at around 400,000 men. That's, that's more than the army, remember? They're, they're limited at 100,000. They're a bit of a ragtag bunch of thugs. You know, you can't really trust them to do exactly what you say. They're a bit of an embarrassment to the Nazis by this point. Obviously, Hitler's in power now. He doesn't need them anymore either. They helped him get to his position, but now he's in position he doesn't really need them. Plus their leader, Ernst Rom, is threatening some form of revolution. You know, he's talking about taking Germany in a socialist direction. He's also a bit of an embarrassment to Hitler because there's lots of rumours and stories about him being homosexual, which he was. But again, that wasn't what wasn't allowed at the time. And again, it, it wasn't it wasn't good for the Nazi party to have someone like that represent them. So what Hitler does on the night of the 30th of June 1934 is he rounds up, he says, here's a meeting, we're going to have a meeting. He rounds up all the leaders of the SA and instead of having a meeting, he kills them. Now, there is some dispute about how many people were actually killed during this purge. The purge lasted a couple of days, 30th of June till the 2nd of July. So who were these people? Well, Rom, obviously, leader of the SA and the guy threatening a revolution and threatening to seize power from Hitler, he was killed. Hitler also settled some old scores. So the guy that was chancellor before him, von Schleicher, he was murdered because obviously he's a rival. He's been chancellor. He's still around. He could take over again if he's still got support. So he needed to go. And then he got Strasser. So he was in the Nazi party, but he was vying for leadership whilst Hitler was in jail. So again, he's been seen as a leader before. He's a threat. He needs to go. As a result of the purge, the SA uh, knew their place. 
People who were left in the SA, Hitler did merge them with the Reichswehr, um, not in a proper role like the army were, but he still merged them to make them feel like they were important. And basically it sent a message. It sent a message to the people of Germany that no one was safe, opposition or rival. You know, if you're not with Hitler, you're against him and you're going. It sent a message abroad that Hitler was ruthless. There's quite a few cartoons made, you know, that mocked this. And, you know, the one with the army salute with both hands now just showed that the amount of control that Hitler got from this act was huge. So by August 1934, Hitler has done most of the steps he needs to do to become the dictator of Germany and to take all power into his hands. He's gained political power by removing all other political parties and removing the Reichstag and basically their, their powers to oppose and vote and debate. He's taken control of local government by removing their powers to debate and challenge his rules. He's taken control of the workforce and any protests that might come from them with the abolishment of trade unions. And he's got rid of any rivals that might take his job because they're also quite capable and quite popular. The only thing left was this guy Hindenburg. So Germany has a chancellor and a president. The president's here, the chancellor's here. The president chooses the chancellor. He, he appoints the chancellor. So he can't really be a dictator with Hindenburg still there. Then Hindenburg died. 2nd of August, 1934, Hindenburg dies of lung cancer. He's a big time smoker. He's reasonably old by this point. You know, he's a general in World War One. He's had a long life. Hitler seizes the opportunity to combine the two roles. So president, chancellor becomes the Fuhrer. Now he's used that title for a few years prior, but now it becomes the title everyone should use to represent this new job of president and chancellor together. And after this, he then takes his last step in gaining control of the army because a dictator can't really succeed and be safe and stable in his position if you've got an army who are led by someone who's not you. So Hitler makes the army swear an oath of allegiance to him. Everyone, literally everyone had to swear this. So it went, it went like top down. So the guys at the top listen to the next guys down oath, and then they listen to the next guys down and verse and verse and verse, until everyone has made this oath to Hitler, to him personally. Okay, it's not to Germany, it's not to their general, it's to Hitler personally. And that's, that's what you need. All you need to be a successful dictator then is full control of the political system, full control of the army, full control of your workers and no competition. Bush, there you are. August 1934, Hitler is dictator of Germany. Consolidation complete.